but won't ever let you down. He got you. Love is amazing, His grace is bringing you every day. And if you ask, you receive abundantly, abundantly. And it's favor. Welcome to Victory Business Forum from Celebration Church, Johannesburg. We are very excited to just be chatting and talking and conversing. The last year or so, we have been talking about pathways to wealth creation. And today, we want to just have a conversation uh, around this and many other things. Just talking about life, reminiscing uh, with my guest today, whom uh, I've known for a few years, and I think. Uh, a well-known businessman uh, north of the Limpopo and uh, with a wealth of experience, uh, Mr. Lisho Chipango, uh, formerly of Indafresh. I think he is, I say formally because he does so many things, he moves in and moves out of investments, so I think we are going to learn a whole lot of things. Uh, Lisho, we are so excited to have you. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, wow, I... Shall we pray as we begin? Father, we thank you for this conversation. We pray, my God, that you will be honored. Your people may be, uh, may be edified as we talk, as we converse. <coughs> Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your help. We thank you, Father, even for as you give utterance to our conversation, that we may speak with boldness and give testimony to who you are, what you're doing, and open doors for many who are pursuing uh, their dream as we, even as we do this, Father, may you build people, build dreams, and build the kingdom. And above all, may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 So, I think to give context, let's just start from, you, your life has been very colorful in terms of business. So, <laughs> so that if we go too far, we, we won't finish. So, let, let's start from, University, what were you thinking when you were feeling? What did you study? What were you thinking in terms of career? And just walk us through your journey. I think starting at university, I'll probably take two years before university. Okay, great. That I was at uh, high school. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually started my high school, I was doing maths, physics, and chemistry. At maths, level. physics, and chemistry. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. okay. You know, this is <laughs> this is interesting. That's yeah. why I say let's take a yeah. two years back. Okay. And which high school were you? At? Um, high school, high school. Yeah. Which is quite mm -hmm. uh, different mm -hmm. to what I've been before. I yeah. spent my primary school mm -hmm. and uh, high school to all level mm -hmm. at Methodist Missionary Boarding School. Okay. okay. I think we can talk there about my background. Yeah. We see. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> right. So, so I started, I was doing maths, physics, and chemistry, and I think uh, in my lower six, um, middle of second term, yeah. right, a partner of Pete Mawick, mm -hmm. then called Pete mm -hmm. Mawick Mitchell and Company, now which, which is an accounting firm, KPM Chartered, Chartered Accountant firm, mm -hmm. came to our school mm -hmm. and he gave a speech about Chartered Accountants. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was on a Friday, I remember. The following uh, Monday, Mm -hmm. I was in the headmaster's office. Mm -hmm. This was middle of second term, lower six. Right. And I said, I want to change my subjects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, what? Yeah. I said, yeah, I want to change my subjects. I want to drop physics and chemistry. Yeah. I want to pick up accounting wow. and economics. No. Wow. Did you do accounts and economics at all level? No. <laughs> 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 but I said, I will start. Yeah, yeah. He chased me out of his office. Mm -hmm. I came back again the following day. Right. After four days, mm -hmm. he decided to call my, my father. Mm -hmm. My father came and my father said, uh, you know, if he says he's on to something, he, 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 I can't stand in his way. Oh, wow. So the headmaster said, mm -hmm. uh, I don't take responsibility for this. It's too late to be changing subjects. And he's going to subjects that he doesn't know. So I said, I'll make it. I, I, I like, like, <laughs> right there, before we go too far, I think I, I like. The, the parental support and mm -hmm. the, the fact that your, your, your dad will say, you know what, I, I know my son, if he mm -hmm. puts his mind to it mm -hmm. and he says, this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. I'm not going to live my life through him, I'll allow him to do what he, that's very powerful. And I think that's a powerful lesson, even for parents to say, let's build uh, the self-esteem and the confidence of our children. That, 
I think that was really a vote of confidence for you. I do remember his words he used. He turned to Shona. This was a white headmaster. Yeah. And he said, I can put my son in Which So, so which, it's which, almost like the bull terrier. If he bites into something, he don't let go. Which was quite an interesting description of me. Yeah. Which much later mm -hmm. in my life, yeah. I would actually always refer back and I say, oh, okay, I think this is what he meant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how I actually changed from. Up until that time, I wanted to be an engineer or an architect or mm -hmm. a So from then, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a chartered accountant. Wow, wow. So that's how I just changed. So, wow. So, so and that again speaks to the power of career guidance. And, uh, and as Christians, I think it's important to expose our children to different professionals so that they have a wider variety, they have an appreciation of things uh, in terms of uh, what they can be. I think that, that's very powerful. You, you're absolutely correct, Doc, because early in my life I then learned, I think during those times, I think uh, we used to suffer quite a lot in terms of lack of exposure. Mm. I had never heard of the word chartered account. Yeah. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> and yet one guy comes and he speaks about it and like, it all changes my career. And my whole life changed. <laughs> From where I was going to be an engineer mm -hmm. or an architect, to yeah. ended up being a chartered accountant. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. that's that's why I decided yeah. to start. <laughs> and it, it significantly changed your life. And, and I think from a biblical perspective, you know, it, it's it's amazing that um, the Bible talks about the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, mm -hmm. or that even before we know Him, mm -hmm. sometimes God puts uh, he orchestrates our lives. Mm -hmm. It's when you look back and say, "Wow, yeah. that one thing." completely changed my life. If I had missed that, mm. I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm. Mm. And, and, and we, I think here in Celebration Church, we've been talking about Holy Spirit encounters. And many people think that the Holy Spirit encounters only start when you are born again. But the Bible actually mm. says that uh, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And he starts orchestrating your life and he, he knows where he's going and he's doing things. Mm. And I think that to me, that's quite uh, profound to say, here is somebody who comes in, I don't even know how the master thought of bringing in this partner to talk about this, yeah. but it's like completely changed the trajectory of your life. Mm. And it also made me realize something much later on in my life when I talk to youngsters, that exposure is important, mm. it's mm. critical. You actually don't even know where you're going to end up, yeah. unless mm. you know that there's some other path or somewhere where you can go. Mm. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. So, and anyway, so that we don't stay there, yeah. so, we, so we are going now from yeah. there, you, you so changed. Then yeah. I moved, mm. I went to university of Zimbabwe, mm. did a Bachelor of Accountants mm -hmm. um, honours degree, right. um, completed that, went back to KPMG. Yes. I remember walking in and I said, that your partner once came to my school. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. a goal. Um, I would do vacation jobs at Pitt Mawik yeah. mm -hmm. until I, I then uh, joined Pitt Mawik. I uh, did my articles of collection, qualified mm -hmm. as a chartered accountant, mm -hmm. um, had a stint with Art Corporation yes. for about a year or so. Mm -hmm. Then after that... Uh, that, that was before it was uh, the management buyout? It was way, way before that. Yeah. That's the time of Walden, Norman Walden. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The holding company was... Uh, uh, Nedlo, which is okay. the yes, other way. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I spent about a year there. Mm -hmm. Then I joined Old Misho. All right. Mm -hmm. The career that really made the issue. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So so how what made you move from uh, at under Nedlo into uh, to Old Misho? I think I was interviewed and I was offered a brand new car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I got this interview. I think which was really fortuitous, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went to somebody said, "Okay, they're looking for a financial accountant." And mm -hmm. I said, uh, "I didn't like the title." Yeah, mm -hmm. because then I was a division of finance manager. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I'm being interviewed for a job of a financial accountant. Yeah. So I remember having the interview, and then uh, I didn't like the title. I thought I was going down. Mm -hmm. But then they offered me a brand new box sunny. <laughs> oh wow, wow. <laughs> so I did it. That, 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 that was the hook. That was the hook. Yeah. And it moved you to a bigger company which is greater exposure. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that probably marked my corporate career mm -hmm. and made me the person that I am, marked a lot of things in my career. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I then started as a financial accountant. Mm. Um, yeah, and maybe so, 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 sorry, sorry, Mr. Chicago. Mm. Uh, for some of us who are kind of slightly ignorant, mm. what is a financial accountant and how do they differ from a normal accountant? I mean, if there's something called a normal accountant. Well, there, there are various disciplines in accounting, mm. uh, financial accounting, management accounting, mm. and, and all sorts of things. But all I was meant to be doing is producing monthly financial statements mm -hmm. for, like, for, for all mutual of them. For, for, the, for the group? For the group. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's how I joined. I was reporting to a finance manager, mm -hmm. would be reporting to an assistant general manager, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I joined as a financial accountant, mm -hmm. and in uh, six years mm -hmm. after joining, mm -hmm. I was managing director. In six years, six years. Okay, okay. Now you have my you have my attention. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, that that's quite a move. Mm. Let, what are the key things that you think, or the the steps that created that acceleration? When you look back and you are reflecting, is it fortuitous? Is it are there some things that we can learn that somebody can say, you know, what? because I think in this victory business forum we have profession, we have business people. Then we have professionals, career professionals. Mm -hmm. So, so what is it that we can blend? The, the key things that you kind of said, I think this really helped me. I know I use the word fortuitous, mm -hmm. but uh, you corrected me mm -hmm. even without knowing that you corrected me when you talked about the steps of a man being mad. Because there are a lot of things that happened in my corporate career mm -hmm. which I can't quite comprehend. Yeah. Yeah. You get it, okay. I went in because I like a boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Before yeah. that, somebody yeah. walked into our school for a career. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there was a man called Brian Bradford who was a British expatriate. Right. He was the general manager and chief executive. Mm -hmm. he, he saw some report I did, I think I was in third or fourth month mm -hmm. as a financial accountant. Right. And he called me to his office. Mm -hmm. And I got the attention. Mm -hmm. of a top guy, right? When there were like three people between me mm -hmm. and that top guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this guy then decided that he was going to take an interest in me. Mm -hmm. And that interest in me, after my first year, mm -hmm. he then said, I believe this young man mm -hmm. has a place in this, in this organization. Wow. And that's how he, has, he started mentoring me. So I was mentored by the top guy. Yeah. And I was like three, four levels below him. Wow. Well, the, I mean, the, 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 that's really amazing, mm -hmm. Brother Lisha. You, you, know, you know, the Bible uh, talks about, and I've mentioned this for our members that they know, I've I, I mentioned this a number of times to say, you know, when you look at uh, people who become reformers in the Bible, mm -hmm. there's one characteristic that seems to come out every time. Mm -hmm. And that characteristic is the word favor. Yes. You know, you, you find that whether you're talking about uh, Joseph, you find that Joseph had favor with Potiphar. Mm -hmm. He had favor. With God gave him favor with the jailer. God gave him favor. Mm -hmm. And that's opened the door. Look at Daniel. Mm -hmm. Look at Esther. Look at most of those people. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the Bible talks about that favor. And I, I've come to believe that, you know, in uh, a favor is actually the currency mm -hmm. uh, for reformers. Mm -hmm. That you... God just uh, creates an opportunity for somebody to take an interest in you and favor you and begin to mention your name in the right places yes. and begin to, mm -hmm. to, to direct your shape. Right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I call those people lynchpins, people who are, who are there who begins to, to shape you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but God positions them. Mm -hmm. But many people think, and here is the thing that uh, I want to, to say, M many people think because it's favor, uh, they confuse favor with grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Okay. But favor can be merited. Mm. There is something I can do. It may be in my demeanor. It may be in my character. It may be in the excellence of work that I do. It may be in the diligence. Mm. So because you exerted yourself and you had a diligent spirit, and that report spoke for you. And I often say to people, you know, when you do reports, when you do things, you pray and say, Lord, Bring my work uh, in the hands of somebody who will favor me, who can open up a path for my destiny. And I think this is what I exactly I'm saying. I mean, think about it. Three months into the, into the job, 
the three legs up and somebody gets an interest in it because they just saw a paper. Mm, yeah. I mean, and that's favor. Yeah, so you, you're absolutely correct. Mm. So from there, then I just had a mature price from being financial accountant. I became finance manager. Mm. I then became assistant general manager, mm. finance and admin. Mm. And then uh, came the time of demutualization, right? right. Of all mm. mutual. Yes, I remember that time. Then I was thrust into a new responsibility. Just before that, then I was uh, tasked with splitting old mutual into two. Because mm. um, then it was a mutual society. Yeah. yeah. I then had to split it. Yeah. So, so, sorry, yeah, so, sorry for our... Okay, uh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, for, again, a lot of our people don't understand mm. uh, insurance. Okay. We, what is a mutual society and what is demutualization? I think that, that is key just for people to even appreciate. Yeah, the mutual society is almost non existent now, right now. Mm. It, it, it is a corporatized, uh, cooperative, if you want to call it that, yeah, yeah. Mm. where individuals at that stage mm. you could actually say who owns all mutual. It's the police you say the police holders. Yeah. Mm. There was nobody else. Yeah. Mm. Because everybody was throwing into which which brought its own mm. uh, challenges politically. Mm. Mm. So the demutualization mm. was when who he, who claims to have started it, mm. created a shareholder fund mm -hmm. from original capital and then separated policyholder funds from, from shareholder mm -hmm. funds. Mm -hmm. Hence, Old Mutual then became a corporate yeah. with shareholders yes. and policyholders having been... Uh, now being people that have money in the business. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. So it was a massive thing that mm. happened internationally mm. throughout. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No, th thank you so much. I think that, that helps clarify. Mm. So, so you were thrust into this role uh, where you were splitting the, I interrupted you. You were talking about the splitting of all mutual into two the, before the demutualization. Yes. It mm. was pre demutualization or preparing for demutualization. Mm. Um, we're splitting the life assurance company mm -hmm. and the investment side of it. Right. So I took away from the life assurance company mm. the investment aspects mm. of the mutual society. Right. And set up old mutual asset managers. Right. And mm. old mutual properties. Right. And then became the managing director of both old mutual asset managers in Zimbabwe mm. Mm. and old mutual properties in Zimbabwe. Right. And then my other colleague um, then became managing director of old mutual life assurance company. Okay. So that was the beginning of the so that was mutual group now. So yeah, now you yeah, have, yeah. You, although you have two, the investment side, which is three, two parts, yeah. the property and the investment. Yeah. This is where you, you then moved into institutional, being an institutional investor as well. Yes. Great. And then you have the insurance side. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so that's where then I became mm -hmm. the managing director mm -hmm. and that was, um, I was 31. At 31? Yeah. Wow. It was, before, it was just after I turned 31. Mm. Wow. Uh, which I think brought its own new... I mean, after about 10 years mm -hmm. in that role, yeah. I I started looking for new challenges. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I think that... that, that, that that's, that's how I ended up living old mission. <laughs> wow. Oh, so, so <clears throat> at 31, again, and this is favor. There are people who have been in the organization well before you mm. and uh, you are thrust into this position but I, I think the other thing that we, we need to talk about is that the role of diligence and the role of uh, uh, performing mm. because ma many people don't realize that within the corporate world mm. uh, the, there is no reward for longevity of service mm. the reward is being able to deliver value mm. contributing so, uh, particularly for believers, uh, we must be known as people who add value. Yeah. When, when an organization, when people in the organization come, they say, you know what, this person, we can almost quantify the value that they've added to the organization. Mm -hmm. and, and when people see that diligence, and the Bible does say that they, uh, I think it says, do you see a man who is diligent in his way? He will stand before great men. That's what Proverbs says. Mm -hmm. So, the diligence to do. And you could have just said, oh, you know what, I just happened on this and that. I'm young, you could have uh, wasted your time running and doing things. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would assume, particularly knowing the British, people have a British mindset. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they don't tolerate a lot of uh, particular shenanigans. They want people who deliver. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think 
I would like to, to just ask you to just speak to us about that diligence, that work ethic. If you are going to look at uh, our viewers and say, what does it mean when you look back and say, okay, if, if I'm looking at somebody uh, to favor them, to see how they can help them when I see potential, what is it about diligence and uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I think I'm saying something. <laughs> you, you, you definitely are saying something. Um, I think I'll cast backwards yeah. on this one. Mm. Uh, something that I learned from, uh, I got from my hero, the hero in my life, mm. is my father. Okay. Mm. There's one thing I learned from him, mm. work ethic. Yeah. Mm. He was um, a factory worker, mm -hmm. but just his work ethic and the work ethic that he drilled into us as a family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that uh, I've taken into the corporate career, I've okay. taken into my business career. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk about then the performance uh, culture. Mm -hmm. I think Old Mutual is a very serious performance culture. Mm -hmm. you, you either achieve, yeah. and you see, I'm thrust into positions mm -hmm. at a young age. Mm -hmm. So you have attention. Mm. People are looking at you. Right. Right? Yeah. People are looking at you. Yeah. You cannot afford yeah. to fail those yeah. that have put you in that position. Yeah. And then it's second a position of trust. Position of trust. Not only was I young, mm. but I was black. Yeah. And, and this is again, I think the context is important yeah. because mm. this is a time when there was uh, immediate after independence and there was that transition from a purely white leadership in most of these organizations, yeah. including all mutual, it was almost a citadel of white capital and white uh, leadership. And, and they're seeing potential in, yeah. a, in an upcoming young black man. And now you also, this is the largest fund manager yeah. in the country. It's mm -hmm. controlling so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're young mm -hmm. and you're black. Yeah. So the second thing besides the work ethic mm -hmm. is a sense of responsibility yeah. that you put on my shoulders. Right. Mm. I grew up though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You grow. <laughs> yeah. You mature. You, 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 you do. Because you really appreciate now what you're carrying. Yeah. And should you fail mm. or err? Mm. And of course I failed and I erred in some mm. aspects. Nobody is perfect. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the eyes will be on you. Yeah. I think talking that about help. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, that sense of responsibility. You know, some people can have responsibility thrust on them. And they don't see the responsibility, they see privilege. Mm -hmm. But because of the way you were raised, you saw that I have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. I owe it to people. Mm -hmm. and, and I think at that time also, even the, the, uh, I think we, we can look at that to say, you look at the political pressures as well, because mm -hmm. people are trying to say, we, that there are people who are watching say, these blacks are going to fail. Then there are the politicians who have their own expectations. I think that's, that's an interesting. But, but I think the, the, what I want to just draw in is say, the... Uh, there's a almost a cliche a saying we have in a celebration church coming from Pastor Tom's man that responsibility does not come with age, but it comes uh, sorry maturity does not come with age, mm. but it comes with taking responsibility. Mm. So you you have the, that sense of responsibility. Although you were young, mm. it made you a mature person. Mm. And people were dealing with you. They were not dealing with you on the basis of age, but they were dealing with you on the basis of your maturity, being able to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, it, it, it was quite an experience, mm -hmm. but it shaped me. Mm -hmm. It yeah. shaped me a lot. Yeah. 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 So, so I, I was going to divert a little bit to the political aspect, because I don't know whether it was uh, before your time, during your time, or after your time, but there was a saying uh, in, in Zimbabwe, in, in uh, corporate folklore, that uh, because of the amount of uh, uh, asset under, assets under management in uh, all mutual and they, it had such a, a strong hold on the economy that people used to say if uh, the old mutual uh, coughs or sneezes, and I don't remember the way, if old mutual sneezes, the country coughs or if the yeah. or it coughs, I mean, do, do, you, do you remember? Yes, I do. Yeah. So I'm trying to put that juxtapose it because many people don't understand the 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 magnitude mm -hmm. of this animal called old mutual mm -hmm. at that time, the impact it would have on the national economy. Mm -hmm. And then you are thinking about that weight of responsibility. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely you're correct. That was during that time. And uh, it was also the time when the word indigenization started. Yeah. And the pressures that I would have is that uh, being black, you expect it mm. to support mm -hmm. every black person that comes and seeking for funding. Yeah. At the same time, you're managing policyholders' funds. Yeah. You also mm -hmm. have to be very responsible. Right. In mm -hmm. terms of how you're doing it, policyholders' mm -hmm. funds and third segregated funds mm -hmm. are also expecting a return. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that balance. Mm -hmm. And then you've got political pressures, yeah. the expectations. Mm -hmm. Again, it was uh, it was quite tricky. But like I said, mm -hmm. that's when you grow. Yeah. You grow up. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Yeah, it was. I, I, um, and invariably you will have uh, scars. Mm -hmm. You will have knives. You will mm -hmm. have bruises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, some of which probably I still carry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that comes with a trend. You can't yeah. expect the good side of a position yeah. and not expect that it comes with, with difficulties and challenges. Mm -hmm. but, but the critical thing is always to be guided by you doing what is right. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. doing what is in the best interest of your mm -hmm. employer. Right. Because first and foremost, mm -hmm. I was employed by Old Mitchell. Right. And I had to be diligent and mm -hmm. I had to be faithful mm -hmm. and honest. To mm. hold me sure. Yeah. But at the same time, I had to be conscious of the environment within which we were investing, mm. within which old Mishra mm. was positioned yeah. as the largest player in, in the economy. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that this, is, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking about the um, the complexity of managing conflicting uh, stakeholder interests. Mm. Uh, you, you, you had, like you said, I think you had kind of alluded to it when you talk about, uh, you know, I have the, the shareholders' interests, I have the uh, policyholders' interests, I have uh, expectations from, I think that's when, uh, shortly after that, there, there was a lot of noise from the the, the newly formed uh, AG or something like that. Mm -hmm. the, there is uh, politicians who had uh, some were altruistic, they're thinking about the nations there. Others were also thinking about themselves. Uh, we, we, without going into specifics, how would you, you just uh, talk to the, the complexity? Because we have a number of people who are in, in delicate positions. We have to, to manage uh, conflicting stakeholder interests. Uh, what, what would you advise somebody uh, when you have so many competing uh, secular interests? I think my advice will come from my experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I leaned on mm -hmm. the most, mm -hmm. I was a trained professional. Mm -hmm. I was an investment professional. Mm -hmm. I had been trained uh, for my qualifications, chartered accountant, uh, accounting degree, later on I was have an MBA, um, I was also trained by Old Mitchell in Cape Town in London on mm. asset management, mm. so yes it was difficult, mm. but it was also simple, right, a viable investment is a viable investment, mm. but what I had to transit across mm. is therefore it did not matter mm. who brought it, whether it was black, white or pink. Mm -hmm. If it's viable, it is viable mm -hmm. and it shall be supported. Right. So that was my guiding principle. Mm -hmm. It was from a professional point of view. Yeah. Of course, conscious mm -hmm. of the environment right. in that um, certain ventures, green ventures, mm -hmm. carried risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it had to be calculated risk. Right. But yes, it is doable and mm -hmm. it was that. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a principle, mm -hmm. principles that you are on. For me, mm -hmm. I don't want to lie to you mm -hmm. uh, and say uh, I wasn't that uh, Christian then. Mm -hmm. In fact, I wasn't born again, yeah. so yeah. I'm not ready to talk yeah. about yeah. Yeah. what yeah, we, I now know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it was my professionalism mm -hmm. and it was a guiding principle mm -hmm. of doing what is right. Yes. Yeah. So, so a focus of, on doing what is right. Mm -hmm. And having guiding principles, mm -hmm. and obviously there were some strong uh, values and ethics around the group in which you were as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Now, now 
I think that, that, that that's great. The I think you you, you mentioned one thing that mm-hmm. I have to to emphasize mm-hmm. when you talk of values and principles. Mm-hmm. The one thing that I've learned uh, when I say old Michel made me the person that I am. Mm-hmm. It's a multinational. Mm-hmm. The culture, mm-hmm. the principles, the structures, the it defines you. Mm-hmm. It gives you structure. Right. It gives. It's very disciplined. Right. So even when you venture and you go into your own business and yeah. you take risks, you already have the, this grooming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where, what, why I value yeah. my corporate experience, my corporate exposure. I, wow. It wow. gave me this discipline, mm-hmm. this professionalism. Oh, wow, wow. And, and, and that, 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 that's important. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. Um, now, I, I want to shift. I know we, we, we want to move to when you, your 10 years stint, uh, in all mutual, then you moved on uh, because you are now saying I want more, uh, more challenges. You've been there, done that. I don't feel a stretch anymore, and, and I want to. What I've seen in uh, in all mutual, I can begin to see a pathway for me. Mm-hmm. So we will get into that. But I, I just wanted us just for to give context to your ten years in in all mutual. Uh, I want to look at particularly. Um, two things. One, you uh, you are a product of a people development program. Somebody saw you and uh, said, look, I take an interest in this person and uh, I want to develop them. I see potential and I want to develop. And I, I normally say leaders are people development practitioners. That you must be thinking of developing people and things like that. Mm. So, so two things I, I want to ask. I want to ask one: uh, Would you do you have one or two stories of um, people who you think uh, you also you you paid forward? Somebody had an interest in you. You had an interest and you developed somebody else who went and did something. That's one. Two. Um, I know you you did talk briefly about. Uh, it being uh, investing, uh, can you share one or two success stories of ventures that you saw uh, and uh, you saw value in and you helped champion the investment and where they are today? Just one or two, I know that there, there will be many. Mm. Okay, firstly, just to correct, mm. my 10 years was the 10 years at the top as much yeah, yeah, okay. Before that, I had six years. Remember, yeah. I said that. So it's 16 six years, years in all mutual. Six, six years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You, you, you ask it. <laughs> it's always very really challenging professionally to be talking about names. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Um, don't give names, just talk to. But uh, mm-hmm. a number of. During the time that I was at uh, managing um, old mutual investments, mm-hmm. that is the time that a lot of the bankers. Mm-hmm. Med were successful, yeah. indigenous bankers, yeah, mm-hmm. including some of our colleagues. Yes, and, right. and all the mutual took positions. All mutual took positions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the time when quite a number of people. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I'll mention supports for Kingdom, for mm-hmm. National Merchant Bank, mm-hmm. for Econet, yeah. for TA Holdings. Mm-hmm. Um, there's quite a number. Yeah, mm-hmm. the point was not that. It was being done because they were blacks. Yeah. The point was being done because they were blacks that needed the support because they had viable features. Yes. Yeah. At the same time, there were also mm. conventional businesses, your mm. deltas, mm. your apex that were also still being supported. Yeah. Okay. Great. So yes, mm. there is quite a number of businesses. Mm. What then happened after that mm. with them? It's what happened with them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, life does yeah. happen. Yeah. But yes. Um, I am not a spokesman of Old Mishwa anymore, but during during my tenure, yes, I can say Mm -hmm. quite firmly that Mm -hmm. yes, the support was there for a number of uh, business successful Mm -hmm. ventures. Okay, Mm -hmm. great. And you know the uh, my mind is going so many ways. Mm -hmm. Just we 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 keep talking about a viable venture. and then there are some people who would, uh, I think I'm throwing this off the cuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people are saying, look, I have an idea. Could you make a distinction for us between uh, a nice sounding idea if I was to come and present you and say, look, 
this is my business plan, this is, what do you look at? I'm just trying to throw you back to your time as an, uh, an investment uh, uh, professional was assessing and analyzing. You say, to help people, we have ideas who they think they want to, to go and seek funding. What are the two or three things that you'd analyze, like to say, get this right, get this right, get this right? Okay. There's obviously quite a number, but mm. the, the most key ones would be, and yet, the first one, mm -hmm. and yet that's one that's most uh, overlooked, yeah. management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to demonstrate capacity of mm -hmm. the management. Right. Uh, either at entrepreneurial level, if you're starting something, mm -hmm. or the corporate management of that venture. Right. Management is key. Mm -hmm. um, Viability also comes through whether the, the concept or the project mm -hmm. is something that is sustainable, that can last, that can yeah. generate the cash flows, mm -hmm. that can pay for the outlays that have taken place. Right. I'm trying to put it in a very simple yeah, 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 that's <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying not to avoid technical, yeah. mm -hmm. technical terms of right. whether we must have an IRR of yeah, this project yeah, yeah, yeah. you pay back. Mm -hmm. it, it must mm -hmm. pay back, I think it's a very good yeah. phrase. It must mm -hmm. pay back what is gotten in. That's true. Mm -hmm. And especially these days, it must generate cash flows. Right. There's a difference between making a profit, a book profit, and yeah. generating cash. Mm -hmm. you, you run short. It must be cash generated. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would say management, mm -hmm. cash generation, mm -hmm. sustainability. Right. I think I'm beginning to get more influence in terms of where I am right now yeah. and where I used to be at all, Misha. Where yeah. I am right now, I'm more leaning to our sustainability, yeah. social impact. But but yes, yes. Yeah. I've made a, yeah. quite a transition in terms of my investment. Yes. Process. And, and, and understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That, that's great. So, so uh, guys, those, those are the issues. If you have an idea, think management. Don't think, uh, many people think, oh, I have an idea, you have no demonstrable competence. If, if you don't have a demonstrable competence in management of the, uh, your idea, there's nothing wrong with uh, bringing in people yes. who have uh, demonstrable competences. Because as a matter of fact, the, the idea will be nurtured and will be managed, the control uh, of those uh, resources that people are putting in. It depends on the management. So I think that that's very critical. And the Bible speaks actually to stewardship. When he talks about management, say uh, it is required of any man that uh, uh, in stewardship to be found faithful. So, and, and I think a lot of uh, people, particularly if you are doing your own thing, you want to say, I want to run my own thing, I want to be everything, I, I don't trust anyone. Uh, if you have that experience and you, you show that you have risen through the ranks, you've done that, that, that may be okay. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, uh, get professionals who have uh, the competence and be able to do that. So I think that's important. Then uh, we, we talked about uh, viability, making sure that uh, it, it does generate cash flow and is able to pay back. And then we need to think about uh, sustainability. Those are critical things. Now, I think we, we, let's move on. So after 10 years at the top, you, uh, you had some significant impact. You, there's something in you that says, uh, I'm made for more. I can achieve more. Uh, talk to us from that. Why were you dissatisfied, and <coughs> what is it that was drawing you onward? And then, how did you move towards that? I think a couple of things. Firstly, I started. Um, I'll be going through same things. Mm. There will be a rights issue of the company. Mm. There will be a new venture. There will be a new property development. Mm. Um, so I started going through similar things. Mm all over and all over again. Mm. But I have to be honest, the main thing that got me to, to, to leave all mission and go into business, mm. I started thinking about my personal net worth yeah. mm. as opposed to the title yeah. mm -hmm. uh, sitting at the top of mm. this uh, massive financial institution mm. right, in my title. And that was brought up, you know, um, I had uh, three accidents, mm. car accidents, wow. which were pretty bad. Mm. Um, the third one of which, mm. I still have this car here. Yeah? Mm. 
and I lost my daughter. Oh, so sorry about that. And uh, I remember we buried her at Warren Hills. Mm. That place, I think, for those that remember, mm. was, you know, the multitudes of people that were there. Mm. Mm. And one day I was driving home on my own and I mm. said, what happened if I had actually gone? Yeah. Mm. In the two, three accidents, the accidents that I had. So this is a wake-up call. What would I have left for my children? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started thinking of... Uh, so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a corporate career yeah, until yeah, you yeah. get to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are different. Yeah. I then started... Uh, noticing or relating to people that would have uh, the death passed on or the main breadwinner passed on mm -hmm. and uh, you have children being taken out of these good private schools mm -hmm. a number of things that yeah. are going through my head and, and they're, they're all life changes a whole life life changes. To a certain lifestyle yes. my wife speaks of yeah. uh, social status is something that yes. Uh, or that social class mm. is something you can move in and out very easily. Mm. Things change and suddenly you, yeah. you, 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 and you're thinking about your family, your children, saying, mm. what am I bequeathing to them? I started thinking of people. And mm. I started even thinking that uh, all those people that attended my daughter's funeral, mm. if I wasn't the managing director for it, would they, they would be anywhere near there. Mm. You know, a lot of things started going on. To, and it wasn't uh, one of... Mm. It was a process over mm. months, over two or mm. three years or so. Mm. Then I started actually saying, you know, I think I need to start planning mm. my life where right. I want to be. Mm. I want to be, I want to go into business and I want to work on my personal net worth. Yeah. Mm. But it's not just going to be like that. Yeah. And also being very careful, I was in a position of trust. Right. So whatever I needed to do, mm -hmm. we had rigorous compliance procedures mm -hmm. at all. What I invested in, what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when I played on the stock market, I had to declare I had to be open. Yeah. So I also yeah. had to do it because of threat yeah. and yeah. narrow. Yeah. And and because all of yourself as an institutional was an institutional investor. So you can easily be competing with your uh, Yeah. The other thing I also started looking at people that I enabled. Mm -hmm. Not in my personal capacity because mm -hmm. I didn't have anything yeah, but yeah. through the position yeah mm -hmm. people that made it yeah facilitated mm -hmm. that's when I then say mm -hmm. I think I now start mm -hmm. making a plan the point I'm making here mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen yeah you think of it you start planning mm -hmm. yeah you start working on mm -hmm. it slowly mm -hmm. yeah so I started thinking mm -hmm. of how I build my own mm -hmm. personal small capital mm -hmm. as opposed to the this corporate position that yeah. I had yeah. And, and, and I think, and that's what made me say, so it didn't happen like that. It mm. was like a process of three, four years mm. until I then said I needed to leave. Mm. I handed in my race. Oh, by the way, mm. inside Brian Bradford, I also worked at a very, very uh, great man, Graham Olick, mm -hmm. who became the group CEO of, of Old Mutual. Yes, I, I remember I Graham Olick. And I mm. remember Brian Bradford handing me over to Graham Olick. Mm -hmm. And I say, watch this young man. Mm -hmm. um, so by the time I then resigned mm -hmm. and I was put on this one year garden leave mm -hmm. <laughs> it was sterilized for a year it couldn't do anything yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's the year that I'll be traveling I'll be plotting, I'll be doing a lot of things and mm -hmm. then till I, I, I then decided to go into business mm -hmm. okay. right. so I think let's uh, uh, those are the reasons yeah. why I then left yeah. so, so, so I, I think here is the thing you, you listening to you, I. Um, you are sitting there. You are thinking. You have a wake up call uh, from the, the 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 accidents. You also begin to reflect, and which is important. We need to be able to reflect, look back, and say, "Am I making progress? Where am I? Is this, is this all there is to it? Can I can, can I do more?" And uh, thinking about your network, thinking about generate transgenerational to say once I'm gone, what am I living? Mm -hmm. uh, how will my family be? And uh, what kind of asset base? What uh, somebody calls uh, uh, wealth creation, he calls it an ATM. Mm -hmm. To say I, I create something that will a perpetual ATM machine. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a way that uh, I can do that? And I think before we 
we, we move in that direction. I think I, I like the qualification that you said. You said uh, there's nothing wrong with being a, a, a corporate person. Uh, I, I know particularly there's a time when motivational speakers were saying, be in business for yourself, you can't always be an employee. Yeah. There was no one who has been a millionaire while being an employee. That employee, that's not true. There are people who have really, yeah, yes. the, you know, who are business leaders. Yeah, you know, yeah. So the, the key thing is knowing yourself, mm. saying, yes, I, uh, uh, this is me if you have been called to be a number two to work for somebody. And the, the structure is such that you can invest out of what you have and create passive income. That's great. Mm. But uh, don't try to go to business because you think I've reached the top, I need to go to business. If you are not wired for business, if you yes. don't have what it takes, mm. you, you make a mistake. You, it's not like, oh, everybody else is going into it. And I think there is something that is subtle in your experience that people may not see. Mm. But by, by watching over you know, investing uh, through the position you were in, mm. in the different people who are doing things. Mm. It's almost like uh, psychologically, you were actually uh, starting businesses. And so you actually have an experience, that, that managerial experience we're talking about, mm -hmm. not just as a corporate man, mm -hmm. but because uh, one way or another, you then develop a vested interest in those projects you invested in mm -hmm. and you watch them. So the more you did it, you were actually vicariously or psychologically, it's like, oh, I've done this a number of times. Yeah. When you finally take that leap, mm -hmm. even though you took years to count the cost, the Bible actually says uh, you don't just go and start building. You need to count the cost so that you don't uh, start and not finish, or you don't declare war without actually evaluating. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what you were doing. Mm -hmm. But you already had a lot of uh, experience having clearly observed close yet. Uh, investment that we made during your time. So anyway, uh, let, let's move on. So you make that step, you have the one year garden leave, mm. and where does Mr. Chipambo go from there? I think there's one thing that I also need to add. Um, mm. I always be very grateful to all Mitra for making me the person that I am. Mm. Um, I'll say that I developed, you picked it quite correctly. By the time I started doing things, Mm. There were things that I've already been doing, mm. but under, under old initial mm. experience. But there's also one thing that it gave me, is networking. Mm. Networks. Mm. Because of that position, I don't know, it, 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 it comes with a position. Yeah. You end up being so networked, yeah. mm. right? Mm. And remember I said somebody helped me, mm. saw me, identified me mm. in the corporate world, and I had people that pushed me, something that built in me, up to now, I'm always looking at doing that to other people, too, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, when I started going out in in, in business, mm -hmm. I now also had a lot of these people that uh, I had networked with mm -hmm. that wanted good mm -hmm. of me. Yeah. That would also help. Mm -hmm. The principle I'm saying here is: mm -hmm. you never make it on your own. Yeah. You work with other people, yeah. you build mm -hmm. networks, right. you help friends, you help relatives, mm -hmm. and you have other people that also help you. Yeah. Yeah. I then also had a number of people that helped me. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's hold the thought there before you... you I think you, you, what you're saying is so profound that uh, many people focus on their net worth mm. and they don't focus on their network. Yes. But they don't realize that their network is key to their net worth growing. Mm. And, and, uh, and, and I think the, the, one of the things you are saying is to say, I think you said it. Uh, also talk, talks talks of relationships. Relationships, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but there's something else that, that, that you say that, is, uh, that I want to just bring to the fore. You said you, you help others in your position mm. uh, as they grew. Mm. So you were sowing seed. Mm. And the, that seed will come back to you in one of two ways. It can come back to you from the very same people. When it's your turn, they now say, you know what, there's goodwill and I, I want to make him. He, he helped me, I owe him. Actually, the, the, the Jewish mindset is to say, if I do you a favor, if I give you a gift, mm. I'm actually, I've actually obligated you to me. Mm. And you accepting my gift is saying, I am willing to be obligated to you. Mm. Because at some point, this is moral, it's not uh, manipulative. 
that you feel like this person blessed me, they did this, and someday you are going to return the favor. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's not done from a manipulator to say, you remember I did this for you, now I'm yeah, calling you yeah. the favor. Mm -hmm. you, you just, the, out of the goodwill of the person, mm -hmm. understanding that they accepting help mm -hmm. it creates an a moral obligation, mm -hmm. not a legal or a manipulative obligation. Mm -hmm. So if when people want to do good to you because they feel like you were good to them, so that that's one way. Oh, they saw you doing good. Good to, to others. others. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. Oh, they saw you doing good to others. Maybe the person yes. that you did good to. That's, that, that, that's precisely my second point. Mm. To say, when you sow a seed, mm. it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to expect it to the from the person you are sowing to. Mm. From a Christian perspective, it's uh, the, the issue is whatever I do when I do good for people, to people, with people, mm. I'm ultimately doing it to God. So God is the one who will choose whether to retain the favor through the actual person you help or through uh, somebody else. Mm -hmm. And many people get stuck there. That's mm -hmm. why I wanted to, to mind that, to say, they think, oh, uh, I helped you, you have to help me. And they actually get bitter mm -hmm. when somebody doesn't retain the favor. But when you are sowing seeds, you are not necessarily saying, this person that I gave is the one who is going to give back to me. Mm -hmm. You do yeah. good and you, you know that good is going to come back to you. God will orchestrate it, doesn't have to be from the same person. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to disabuse somebody from mm -hmm. expecting it from the very person you helped. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Mm. Um, the other point is mm. help. Mm -hmm. The misconception that we always get help mm -hmm. is not money. Yeah. It's not necessarily money. You get help with ideas. Right. right? You get help by a phone call, mm -hmm. linking you up to some person. That's what yeah. I told you of met with. Yeah. Some door gets open to you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You get your idea polished up. Yes. You get your idea critiqued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So help mm -hmm. do not define help as in it terms is of financial. Financial. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be financial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be just a sounding board. Mm -hmm. Right. Help mm -hmm. comes in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Accept all help and seek all help. Yeah. And I think there's monetary value to all of those help because yes. they think about even if it's an idea, mm. uh, think about it, you, you could have had uh, to pay a consultant mm. to polish your idea. Yeah. Mm. And, but here you are, you have somebody who will say, you know what, uh, think about this, or oh, I know somebody who can help. And that introduction makes a huge difference. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's incredible. So I think we, we were at Old Mutual, so we live Old Mutual. Mm. You have that now. What is this your own thing that we, we keep doing? So you wanted to be in business for yourself. Mm. Oh, what did you actually do? Well, maybe I can start look, <laughs> talking about what I'm doing so that we don't trace exactly because it could take quite long. Yeah. No, 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 before you go there, I, 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 I want to get to Indafresh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Interfresh, not in the sense that it was the biggest or the most important, but uh, Interfresh, I think, just like old Michel, mm -hmm. it put me through the meals. Mm -hmm. A very, very serious meal. Mm -hmm. um, but before so I, I think, in, so in yeah. about 10 minutes, can you walk us through old Michel, whatever you did through Interfresh, and then uh, your, what you're doing now? What you're doing now is mm -hmm. not in the 10 minutes. The okay. 10 minutes is between the old mutual <laughs> and now. That's the, the period. Well, what, what, what I decided then to do was mm -hmm. that um, what do I have? Mm -hmm. I have ideas, mm -hmm. right? I have an investment brain. Mm -hmm. I'm an investment professional. Yeah. So one, I'm always going to be in investment and financial advisory. Right. Structuring things. Yeah. I, I did it so many years. The mm -hmm. things that come so naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of personal cash flow, mm -hmm. uh, it probably is one that gives a lot of this big lump sum. I structure this yeah. transaction mm -hmm. for this corporate or for this foreign investor or for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. It gives a, a lump sum and yeah. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I always believe is mm -hmm. my forte, my passion, the one that drives my brain mm -hmm. and probably is the one aspect about me that's mm -hmm. least understood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but so, so it's your cash cow also? 
Yes, mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 not so mm-hmm. easy. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I don't have mm-hmm. an advisor. It's a boutique. Mm-hmm. I run it on my own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't have any other employee. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I work with my wife, who's mm-hmm. also in finance. Right. I contract mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. Uh, as and when you need as an analyst for this mm-hmm. an analyst on a specific project. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's my passion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Then I st- then also said I also need to start to build generational assets mm-hmm. that can move on. Yeah, without me, because this one, because yeah, I, I was not about, there. I'm not there. I was about to say, I, I understand that having been a dentist, you knew that uh, the you are the business. Yeah. If you are not there, nothing. It doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to institutionalize. But others have, but it's more difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. I've heard people that said you came in so you can make it. Yeah, but the way I've structured yeah. mine is just yeah. not easy. Yeah, mm. easy to. Yeah, right? okay. So that's when I then started looking. Then I then said at that time, what sort of businesses do I need to mm-hmm. get into? Mm-hmm. Way back, mm-hmm. I didn't want a business that is dependent. Sorry to my colleagues in government, just dependent mm-hmm. on local currents. Right. So I had to get into something that is export. Yeah. Okay. Because I wanted to build value. Mm-hmm. That's that's how I ended up getting into interface because okay. it's export. Right. Right. Uh, then I also wanted something that is real assets, mm-hmm. real value. Yeah, that's real estate. So, yeah, and mm-hmm. property. Mm-hmm. Something that I also do quietly. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, something that sustained me when I fell into difficulties at Interfresh. <laughs> yeah, so that's in the public domain. So we're not going to into much detail. Yeah, we we're understand. Just yeah, it. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, I think it's important that yeah. we actually get some lessons from that. Yeah. On what 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 yes. so I went through the interface. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, then I also end up in mining. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 investment financial advisory. Mm-hmm. It's uh, real estate uh-huh. investment property. Mm-hmm. It's Agriculture. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was not. There was just the interfresh, but I'm also dabbling in private equity. Right. Focus on Africa with okay. some partners I'm working with. Okay. And then now in mining, mm-hmm. uh, we've got a coal bed methane gas special mm-hmm. grants in northern Matebeleland. Well, that, that, that's a political hotbed. Yes. Yeah. No, really. but no, okay. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying for. I, I, I'm speaking. No, I'm not talking about yours. In the, I'm talking about the, the within the Zimbabwean context in the public press. Uh, press. Mm-hmm. There, there has been a lot of. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but sometimes the press also exaggerates. So I'm just speaking from an uninformed person. So the, yeah. it doesn't reflect your investment. Yeah. So, yeah. so those those the 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 kind of businesses that I'm in now. Wow, wow. Mm. that that's a handful. No, not really. <laughs> I want to do more. You you, you want to do more? Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, but uh, beyond that, now my passion now is going into like I say. Focusing on things that have sustainability mm. and social impact investments. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Before we go there, you, uh, I kind of brushed aside the the Indafresh, and you said we need to draw lessons. So, um, without getting into detail, just talk about the things you learned uh, out of that experience and other experiences we remember in this conversation because we are talking to business people mm-hmm. we, we we don't want to leave it as a case study where they have to draw their own we we, we bring in some of the learning points mm-hmm. then if they want they can draw more, uh, more. but uh, let's get back to your MBA I think, <laughs> yeah, say, what did you what are the key learnings that you think are transferable okay That's I mean, the first and foremost interface turned out to be a very difficult Mm. investment mm-hmm. and a very rewarding <laughs> investment in terms of return. I don't mm-hmm. know whether this is a classic case of high risk high return, yeah, yeah. but I didn't go into it looking at it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first bit was when I walked in and the Greek guys that were there and the, the 
externalization and all these things, mm-hmm. and I ended up with mm-hmm. all running battles with reserve pen, but mm-hmm. I didn't to clean it those things. Up, yeah. got cleaned up. Mm-hmm. But my experience with Interfresh, uh, that's probably very well documented, was when Interfresh owned Mazoa Citrus Estate. Yeah. And that they're running with the former first lady mm-hmm. who. Wanted to took acquire. over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, she took, grabbed seventy five percent of the land, yeah. Yeah. and, and uh, the, it was a significant asset. It was a significant of asset, yeah. you know. For those that know a balance sheet, she put an asset there, seventy five percent of it. Mm-hmm. Woke up one day, boom, mm-hmm. it's gone. Mm-hmm. The other side, the liabilities are all still there. Yeah, <laughs> you still have banks to pay. Yeah, you mm-hmm. still have workers to mm-hmm. look after. Right, and. Um, I went for three and a half years mm. without a salary. Mm. Oh, uh, fighting a legal battle, mm-hmm. um, and the investments that I was talking about property, I was surviving on rental income and yeah. on my wife's mm-hmm. salary. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that speaks to multiple streams of income. Yes, uh, and it, it's a diversification of your yeah. mm. of your your revenue. Yeah. yeah. You had banks, you had creditors, mm-hmm. all coming wanting their mm-hmm. monies. Yeah, and so some actually were putting now pressure because they were aware of what's happening. They say, if we don't get now, it now, we are was it. now aware that yeah. the, 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 the land is gone. Mm-hmm. So instead of fighting the first family, I decided to sue the government mm-hmm. and went after the government. Mm-hmm. And I had a three and a half year legal battle, mm-hmm. uh, which culminated in a high court ruling mm-hmm. where government were then ordered to compensate mm-hmm. Interfresh right. for that land. Uh, I argued evaluations in court myself because of my background. Yeah, I yeah. did evaluations, yeah, yeah. I did my PowerPoint presentation mm-hmm. in our high court. Mm-hmm. We won the case. Mm-hmm. So yes, we Interfresh became the only <laughs> Land owner that actually got compensated. Wow, wow, wow. based on evaluation mm-hmm. which we won in, yeah, yeah. in a high court, mm-hmm. and they had to be structured via treasury bills, which again mm-hmm. is something that was I'm very well versed with. Mm-hmm. So, yes, we got so, so it's like God, um, we had prepared you for this moment when you look back at your, your journey from. Uh, as someone wanted to do engineering, now you are a chartered accountant, your way into all mutual, mm-hmm. dealing with becoming an investment professional. Mm-hmm. And all of this stood you, uh, stood you in good stead mm-hmm. when, when you now needed it. Yeah. And um, the resilience, mm-hmm. fight spirit, mm-hmm. believing in what's right. Yeah. By that time, mm-hmm. I was born again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was also a believer. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I stood. God stood with me, mm-hmm. um, and I do remember when uh, Pastor Maurice in Konashuro. Yes, yes. We used to was you one of my mutual key, key, right hand men at all times. Right, yeah. Uh, took me to Pastor Tom for mm-hmm. the first time. I actually, uh, besides singing in church, yeah, you know, yeah. Went to his to his thing and they prayed for me mm-hmm. while I was going through that that, mm-hmm. that period. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of guys. A lot of colleagues, a lot of mm-hmm. saints mm-hmm. supporting, yeah. praying with me. Mm-hmm. I had um, difficulties even to do with personal security mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. all sorts of things. Yeah. And again, I also have people within the system also yeah. supporting yeah. Yeah. and protecting you. Yeah. Um, Talk that was some experience. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> that was yeah. some experience. Wow. <laughs> It's, it's incredible, isn't it? But it's all over, and then what remained of Interfresh? Mm-hmm. Not we, before we go there, I, I think that there's... Um, uh, here you are, you got born again, uh, hopefully, uh, some other time we can come back to that. Mm-hmm. But the, I think the, the thing is, and many people don't understand that business is, uh, to a significant extent, is also spiritual. And the, when you engage in business, whether you are dealing with free masks or whether you are dealing with uh, uh, people, animist people who believe in uh, uh, going to sangomas and things like that, mm-hmm. there's a lot of spiritual activity behind 
business. And sometimes people get confused. A lot of things happen. And many believers don't realize that uh, there is power in prayer. There is, uh, when you do business, uh, I think what we were told in school to say, don't mix business and religion, is, is actually not true. Because in fact, the Freemasonry is, they, they admit that they are a religion. The secular humanism is now admitted as a religion. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hindus, the Muslims, they, they, can, they can stand up and uh, use their own principles of their religion within their business. And nobody says, don't mix religion. Mm -hmm. It's when it comes to Christians that we are told, no, no, don't mix God and religion. I remember I invested in a, in a steel factory at some point, and I was told by the, mm -hmm. my operations manager, I said, no, 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 this is steel. It doesn't yield to prayer. Mm -hmm. but, but that's not true. The fact that even that battle that you won in the High Court, a challenging government, and I mean, up of the, in many cases, very few people won against the government. Mm. But there is strength, there is power in prayer. Mm. So we shouldn't underestimate mm. uh, that as a resource. Mm. It's actually a critical resource as business people to say, you need a prayer network. People will yeah. be praying with you, will be encouraging you, strengthening you, sharing scripture. And uh, when you had an opportunity, like you say, you, you were taken to Pastor Tom and I'm sure he, he prayed for you and he took an interest in also in that battle as well. Mm. No. Yeah, it is mm. it, it's very difficult to, to separate. Mm. In fact, you can't separate it mm. because you are leaned on it. Yeah. The strength, mm. the energy, the fighting spirit. Mm. I remember uh, one of the songs I used to, to sing a lot was mm. Pastor Bonnie. You know the one that mm. goes, Having done all you stand. stand. Oh, yes, having done all you stand. To stay, stand. God gave me the brains, God mm. gave me the energy. I'm mm. going to use everything. Mm. I read the Land mm. Acquisition Act. Mm. I did everything. Mm. But then I would always say, I've done all I can. Mm. But there's no. one person that's going to move me across. Yeah. And, and that's God. And that's God. Oh, wow, wow. And, and it does come through. Mm. I think many people will, will uh, throw a temper tantrum to say, why did God allow it? Yeah. And in, instead of saying, you know what, it is what it is. The things, life happens, and when it happens, can I lean on God? If you look at the people in the Bible, mm. I mean, most of our heroes, it's like, we, we celebrate the, them being heroes, mm. but we overlook the, the stress points, the pressures, they went through. I think it was somebody who, who sang a song. I think yeah, our generation will, will know mm. that the pressure makes diamonds much harder than stones. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and many people don't realize that to say the, the, the thing that differentiates a diamond and stone is pressure. Mm. And people, when Pastor Tom often says, again from one of his mentors, uh, perseverance always outlasts persecution. Yes. But, but the issue yeah. is to say, you, uh, you, you are saying, okay, this is where it is. But God will see me through, and you lean on to God, yeah. and He came through. Yeah. Okay, let's move on now. So, and here is the thing that I like. I think where we're going, you're saying so. You won the battle in court, and you were compensated for land mm -hmm. uh, in treasury bills, which I'm sure you, being uh, <laughs> the finance guy you are, you you invested those, you played, and you mm -hmm. did financial engineering. So you you recovered value from what many people have thought this is a lost yeah. asset. Mm. But that was not all. That was the remaining portion that you were going to manage. Talk to us about that. Okay, before the remaining portion that mm. of interface that was there, mm. um, I think there is something that I remember, even my wife and my directors, she was also on the board, mm. being very clear about it. You know, I said we went for like three and a half years of legal battle. Yes. We would not have a, uh, not have a salary. When mm. we got some money, mm. we start paying people, the law yeah. workers. Yeah. Mm. And so by the time we got the compensation, mm. the company owed workers back pay. Mm -hmm. We made it a point that we paid pay. everybody yeah. mm -hmm. all their back pay. Yeah. We paid the senior. Mm. You know, I, I had to have mutual separation with all the same guys, yeah, and yeah. I was left with young stars. Yeah. Remember we spoke about um, developing 
Mm. People, people, yeah, mm. Interfaith survived mm. because of a graduate trainee program that mm. I had initiated when I started. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because we couldn't afford mm. all the expensive guys, yeah. I had mm. to let go of mutual separation. Mm. There was a tire of youngsters yeah. <laughs> that mm. were coming through the graduate trainee wow. programs. Mm. Those are the guys that ended up being the head of the various departments, the right. finance, the mm. agriculture, the mm. water culture, the mm. everything. Right. And after we got the compensation, mm -hmm. we had to pay them yeah. a loyalty bonus. Yeah. Wow. wow. And um, I know three or four of them. They so managed sorry, to buy let, let, me, let, let me correct you. <laughs> you. You didn't have to. You you wanted to. I mean, I mean it's it's, yeah. it's not it's it's a have to from an internal campus. Yes. Yeah. No, no, not an external. Yeah. Well, you just want to make that distinction. Yeah. And, and I think, the, 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 to, to me, that's honorable, that's integrity. Yeah. And again, that's sowing, because the Bible does talk about yeah. the, the cry of the, uh, the, the workers whose uh, earnings have been, yeah. uh, have, have been uh, withheld. Yeah. But you, you said, you know what, uh, never mind, they, they do understand the challenge, yeah. but they, they stuck it with me, they, they were there, so we paid the back pay, and we also reward their loyalty. And that, that's incredible. And that's a seed you are sowing as yeah, well. We pay the bonuses. Mm -hmm. We also went back to some creditors mm -hmm. who had never thought they were going to get money. We knocked mm -hmm. on their door and we said, yeah. by the way, mm -hmm. two, three years ago, yeah. you, we owed you this. We owed you 30,000, we owed you 30,000. Wow. We wow. paid every single person mm -hmm. that we owed. Mm -hmm. And then after that, mm -hmm. we declared a dividend to shareholders. Wow. wow. From, the, yeah. from the process. Mm -hmm. Then, there was a residual. At that time, Interfresh was a listed company. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a residual mm -hmm. Interfresh. The 30% there was still 300 mm -hmm. hectares of mm -hmm. land, mm -hmm. of oranges, there was, work, there was the juicing factory. Mm -hmm. uh, it turned positive. Mm -hmm. It started operating profitably and viably, cash mm -hmm. positive and everything. Wow. And that's the business that I then sold uh, mm -hmm. in February last year. So you, you then disinvested it. So completely yeah. disinvested. Oh. And when I now put together what came through the dividend mm -hmm. from the compensation mm -hmm. and the proceeds of the sale, mm -hmm. you look at the period that we had that shareholding. Mm -hmm. I say it is the most difficult investment I've ever come yeah. across and yet the most rewarding. Most rewarding. Yeah. When you then look at no matter what basis Mm -hmm. Calculation of retail you work on. Yeah. Phenomenal. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> and to get, and it, it, it's very but, satisfying yeah. after a mm -hmm. lot of pain. <laughs> you know, they, they say the shareholder is paid, it will eat last. Mm -hmm. But but I think here is the thing. Uh, we look surprised and we should be surprised uh, at that value. But when you look at the integrity, the diligence, the putting others first. Mm. Remember we said that when you sow a seed, mm. you, you expect a harvest, not necessarily from the people, but from God. And I believe that uh, that reward you are talking about when you finally uh, disinvested very profitably, it was actually God saying, you know what, you honored principle, mm. you stood for the vulnerable, you put them first. Mm and you honor them, and I'm going to honor you. The, the Bible actually says, uh, in Proverbs, says, he who pities the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will pay them back. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you are actually operating biblical principles mm -hmm. uh, as you are doing that. Mm -hmm. And God uh, is not unrighteous to forget your labor. Mm -hmm. And th that's incredible, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so I think we, we have about 10 minutes in, in this session. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you you disinvest, you do this. Where, where are you at now? What? Uh, I mean, to the extent that you can share. I know there's something that you may not be able to share. You did talk about uh, investing into mining and other things. I think, uh, like I said, I'm looking now at more of um, generational something that can. Pass on. I'm mm. going to continue with my investment. Yeah, yeah. And that's my passion. That's yeah. what drives mm, mm, mm. that drives me. Yeah, it's it's more into again still agriculture mm. and mining, right, and real estate. 
with this property? Agriculture, mining, and real estate. I thought after enough rates, you would say, I'm done with agriculture. I'm now a private equity focused on agriculture. And again, we were talking about networking. When mm -hmm. I went through this. Uh, challenges with Interfresh, I yeah. had a private equity mm -hmm. fund mm -hmm. that co-invested in me. Yeah. In fact, they got caught up. They just put in four million US mm -hmm. dollars at that time, huge amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when that land thing happened. Oh. So we walked through. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about my partner. That's the partner that yeah. was from the private equity. Yes, yes. So because of my investment exposure, now mm -hmm. I'm more involved in the uh, private equity, equity fund. Yeah. We're now working on a separate yeah. uh, Food Africa Food Security Fund. Okay. That we're now doing. It's a private equity fund that's investing in Africa for food security. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. And so now that's that's mm -hmm. what I what, what I'm what and, and these are the people that I met through yeah. networking through the investment that mm -hmm. took place in, in, in Interfresh. And, and and for them to uh, I'm I'm just hazarding a guess here. Yeah. Uh, for them to invite you into them as a private equity partner. Mm. Uh, it should go back to some of the things we talked about, diligence, that somebody is always watching, somebody is seeing, mm. is they, they saw value in you mm. and they uh, appreciated who you were and they saw that you could add value. If you had handled their investment, because they invested, things were bad and then immediately things went sour. Yeah. If you had not had integrity, they would have just said, this is a no-touch, mm. and don't go, and don't, don't go air. But, but uh, I think it speaks to uh, the principles, I think it goes back probably to your father, when he said, uh, a man of integrity, a man with a serious work ethic. Mm. And I think that, that's really, uh, that's incredible. And the Bible does say, train up a child in a way that he should go, and he will not depart. Mm. And I think parents, sometimes we, we forget this, we, we, we almost spoil our children, we don't expose them to a work ethic, to a mindset of handling wealth. And I think sometimes, and I think this is where I want us to kind of close the, 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 our discussion, that sometimes we, we, we you, you are talking and thinking, now I need to think like I need to think generationally. Mm. But so often, uh, particularly we who are first generation into wealth, we don't prepare our children to be able to sustainably manage mm -hmm. that wealth. Mm -hmm. So, so, so uh, how do we do that? How do we groom it? Because a lot of uh, things have been lost. The, the parents worked in a generation, worked so hard, and you thought uh, now it's going to be transgenerational. Mm -hmm. And then these kids, they, they're never taught to work, they ne don't have any work ethic, completely destroyed them. That's the biggest challenge that we've got. Uh, I always really make relates to two scenarios. Mm. If you look at us blacks, you know, from from our generation, Doc, mm. you look at my businesses that were there, and I read Zobas, yeah, yeah. Mm. and Angoni, Tashi, and what mm. if you want to be careful. Yeah. Mm. The day that dead goes, mm. Rana, <laughs> they fight we, we're just used to drawing cash from yeah. there. Mm. How do we get our own mm. children? Mm. Look at the other story, mm -hmm. the Oppenheimers. Yes. Right? One of my good friends, Godfrey Gomez, who used to be CEO of, of yeah. Anglo American, yeah. we used to talk about this, you know, Jonathan Oppenheimer, this, this, mm -hmm. this, this youngster. Yeah. The way the Oppenheimers are groomed and yeah. progressed through mm -hmm. their businesses yeah. in such a manner that. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when Jonathan would come to, to, to Zimbabwe mm. and Zima Alois mm. and Bindura when mm. Gosu was still CEO. Yeah. He would spend six weeks mm. in the wages office. Yeah. And then in the marketing doing mm. invoices. Right. The difference would be at four, five o'clock mm. when they leave the office. The mm. car he goes into. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we spoon feed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because so, we try so, to compensate for yeah. our own problems yes. that we had when we were growing mm. up. It's how we, I don't have an answer, yeah. I'm striving. Yeah. So, I, I think it's, uh, it's one of those things that we have to work on. Yeah. And I think we, 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 we think uh, my child should stand on my shoulders, which is true, mm -hmm. but they must also end their right yes. 
And so you find that in most cases, when we have our businesses, we start our children at the top. Yeah. But the, the, so there are two mistakes with that. Number one, they have an entitlement mentality. Yeah. Number two, they don't understand the business. Mm. So what you're talking about, Jonathan being sent Oppenheimer to start from there, is that while he's doing that, he's learning the business. He understands the business. Mm. Yeah. When he rises to the top, mm. he's not just somebody who is just uh, issuing edits. Mm. He understands the business model. He understands what happens mm. down there. Mm. And I think sometimes we, we, we think, oh, the, the founder's child cannot start there, they have to start up here. But we're actually robbing them mm. of the, the, the appreciation and understanding mm. of the business. Mm. And, and also the price that was paid to go up there. The, thirdly, it means that even the staff will respect that child when they take off. Mm. Because they saw them rise through the ranks. They know that it's not like uh, they earned it because they, they belong to the right family. Yes, there is that aspect, but people know that, no, 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 they understand, we saw them. They, and you find that even the, uh, within that training schedule, it's very regimented. Mm. And the, 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 somebody is watching them as a hawk to say, you are not just to get by with substandard things. Mm. You are going to do the very best, yeah. mm. even in those menial jobs. Mm. You know? So, so that, that's, that's, that's incredible. Mm. That's incredible. Mm. Okay, so, so mm. le, let's close. I think I've just taken an executive decision, guys, to say uh, and I'm going to blackmail Mr. Chupango to have uh, next month to have just one more session. Today we're telling uh, the story, learning from his story. Mm -hmm. But I want him to just teach us some business principles as he just feels. We, today it was more storytelling, although we picked up a number of things, but there, I think there are things that we as business people can learn from those who have gone uh, before us and uh, extract and learn from them. You, you, you know, I used to, to, at some point I was teaching MBA uh, students for Nottingham uh, Business School in, 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 in Zim. So one of the things I, I did, uh, we had all these case studies, but I was getting frustrated to say, Zimbabwe, this is 2006 to 2009, and we're in a crazy environment. A lot of people think, oh, when I am investing, they have stable economies, they could project, uh, there are projections 20, 30 years. Yeah. And you had, uh, in Zimbabwe, then you couldn't project two months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the case studies would not, the, the people were training for MBA, they were not, uh, they're saying, we hear what the book says, but that doesn't apply here. Yeah. So one of the things I did, I, I started going to some of your colleagues then, uh, who were CEOs of uh, group companies they were like your know, Joe Mutwiza, Shingim uh, mm -hmm. uh people like um, uh, Shingim and that group, mm -hmm. Colin Gura. Mm -hmm. I would invite them into live case study sessions, say, tell us your stories, tell us the, a, a complex matter or, or teaching change management. So talk to us about the change process that you handle. So as they walk the process, it helped people. To, to understand from the perspective from the top. Mm. So, so I, I, I'm inviting you for next week, next month on VBF, just speak to us uh, just business principles that you have learned. Uh, so I think this is just marketing for next month. But we, as we close, I just wanted us to we bring us to speed. You threw in to say, or initially said, you were not born again. Then at some point you said, you were, you were born again. Just... <laughs> When did this born again happen? Talk to us a little bit about it. I, I, I wish it was actually as marked as most yeah. people born yeah. again. <laughs> sometimes it's a process. There yeah, was a, a process. Okay, first and foremost, I was born in a Christian family, mm. Methodist, but we see it. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't change up church now. Yeah. Right? Mm. I went to Methodist it's missionary school schools yes. until you primary, went secondary. Mm -hmm. I was in um, I would attend church mm. Methodist. Mm. Um, at some stage, we then decided to move to celebration, mm. Mm. and uh, there's a story to it in mm. that um, me and my wife were both chartered accountants. Mm. <laughs> so our daughters mm. went with their with my sister-in-law mm. to one of the Pentecostal churches. They mm. came back, mm. and of course, my Wisiri and 
and the data costers yeah. they found more fun elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So they were now dragging their feet and barely not wanting to go to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we decided, okay, let's try and explore these Pentecostal churches mm -hmm. and see which one suits us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we had this church yeah. with our checklist. Yes. Okay. We're ticking, we're ticking. ticking. Okay. We attended six, seven. Wow. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Seven, you know, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think celebration was the, I remember telling Pastor Tom, was the fifth right. we attended. Mm -hmm. Went to the sixth and the seventh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and daughter said, no, but let's go back there. Yeah. Yeah, they then mm -hmm. identify their niche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to celebration's credit, mm -hmm. we ended up at celebration mm -hmm. because of the children. Wow. 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 Our daughters just loved it. Love. They just said, This mm. is our place. Mm. So, we had two others after that, and they said, Why are we bothering you? Yeah, we, we, we found our place. place. Yeah. So, that's how we, we. So, then when I got to, to celebration, mm. and I think it was one of the altar calls, mm. the mm. altar calls, I think it was in 2011, mm. I think. Yeah. One of the altar calls, mm. that's where I came actually. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, so we, I always knew that I was mm. uh, a Christian, we mm. the Methodist, but it was mm. like a new mm. thing. I I I mm. felt it was time for me to yeah. accept Christ. Yes, mm. in that manner. Wow. So I took the altar call. Wow, um, and and I'm sure even when we're talking, it's uh, it it shows the while the, the ethical structure uh, and the foundation laid mm. was still there. Mm. The, 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 your perspective, uh, your faith uh, informed and uh, uh, enriched your approach to life thereafter. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. All right, so th thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chipango. I think th this, this has been exciting. I hope that uh, our viewers, I hope that you found this uh, very useful. And thank you for your vote of confidence in having uh, inviting Mr. Chipango for a, a session. I think there is a wealth of wisdom, and we we have learned from his experience. But now we want him to we want to to rope in the teacher in him, so that we can learn some 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 things for next month. So don't miss next month in right here at Victory Business Forum Celebration Church Johannesburg. We we I, I think you can see a lot of things that speak to what we are talking about in terms of wealth creation. I think we touched on so many things. You can see the, so many things that he was you he, he, he dabbled in. But he is an investment professional who is beginning to create uh, investments for himself, not just as someone who is doing it for others. And that that's incredible. So we want to learn from him uh, in the in the next session. So today, let's just uh, close at this stage and uh, shall we just pray? Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that we have had. We believe you. We trust you. We Pray that this is edified, this is encouraged, this has helped somebody. So we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. We thank you for Mr. Chipango and for the, the blessing that he has been and the things that we have learned from him. Father, we declare your favor, your blessing, even in this new season as he, he turns a new season in terms of his investment thrust and in his business thrust. Father, we declare that even as he has watered us, may he be watered. Father, we pray for your favor. We pray for your blessing. We pray for the grace of God to go before him. We thank you, oh my God, that you are you are you are causing you to enter into a season of harvest. That the seeds he has sown over the years may this be a period of harvest. May ye harvest from the seeds that he has sown for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. amen. Th thank you so much, Mr. Chibamo. Thank you, Doc. So we we look forward to being with you again next month. Yeah, sure. So. It may not be as glorious as uh, today. Today may have given the impression that everything was walking door is smooth. No, no, There's it, some rough it, stuff. <laughs> but, but, but we learn more from the rough stuff. So we, we look forward yeah. to learning from that. Thank you. All right. So this is VBF signing off. We will meet in the... Uh, right now some details are being posted for the Zoom link where we have some just reflections and interactive session for 45 minutes. Thank you so much. Bless you and we meet you in the Zoom session. Won't ever let you down. He got you. His love is amazing. His grace is bringing you every day. And if you ask, you receive abundantly, abundantly. And it's flavor.